guys, Hayes here from Malaysia. I'm an artist and speed painter and today I'm going to respond to one of the requests which is a dark skin um, portrait tutorial on Procreate. So let's get started. So this portrait is actually tilted this way so we have got to be very careful with our grids. So with this kind of portrait, I like to just uh, draw a frame for the face first doesn't matter if it's wrong in the end but something to get us started and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the eyes so with each of these uh, ele elements that I'm gonna put down I'm gonna be doing a lot of vertical lines to measure so when you use vertical lines to measure make sure that they are perfectly uh, straight vertically always refer to like the side of your screen and make sure they are vertical okay after we have a, an element done correctly we can put in more information for the rest of the face to judge distance between things and then of course to judge the height of the ear so I'm drawing a lot of horizontal line and vertical lines today so make sure you draw every information uh, shadows, highlights because the more information you draw down the more guidelines you have to get everything correct okay I'm going to enlarge the whole thing so now I'm putting down the horizontal guidelines for the nose okay once we have the nose we will have enough information to put down the other eye just trying to get the angles correct if I find that I cannot continue like right now I couldn't continue the eye because I feel like I don't know where to place them I would just continue to do uh, areas that I am confident of their location and right now the thing that I am confident about is the lips so I'm gonna do that first so I got the vertical line where the lips would end even for the teeth I have to follow the grid and not just imagine the center of the teeth everything has to be measured okay now I think I can get the chin and the jaw line with all the lines that I have which is a lot of lines okay and right now I'm just trying to see if I have enough information to proceed with the rest of the sketch okay so right now it's good that I've come so far because I see a mistake here is clearly round which means that the eyes is a lot thinner because that the the drawing is so dark, the photo is so dark, so can't really see the form of the face. But I, so in times like this, uh, all we have to do is just rely on our anatomy studies to bring us through. I'm just gonna correct the jaw, it seems a little bit long. And when the jaw is too long, the portrait ends up looking like a horse so you have to shorten that and also try to uh, slim and round the face a bit to give her a softer softer frame okay let's see if we can place the eye right now and if it will look correct okay let's see just correcting any elements that I think is wrong so right now there is way too much information on the screen I'm just going to remove some of the lines so I can see if uh, the portrait is correct seems like it is but it also seems like the mouth is too big so I'm just going to adjust that to be a little bit more delicate um, sometimes I get this mistake because my brush size is too big and then everything and not too big uh -huh, this looks a lot more correct 
Okay, I'm happy with this. I'm just gonna check for things that are wrong, which is this entire eye. Isn't it good to be able to move things around? Okay, I'm just gonna erase all the unnecessary lines for the hair. I'm happy with this. Just let me flip it to check. Looks good. Just a little bit masculine, but it's alright. It'll be sorted out once we pull in the tones. Okay, let's get started with the grayscale. Okay, so this is our first time doing the dark skin uh, grayscale. So, so much more information in grayscale, seriously. So what I don't want to do is give it a dark background, so I'm just going to put something lighter this time compared to the background. Maybe let's talk about color theory a little bit more. So I'm going to give it like, uh, what color was it? Mm. Let's give it like a hot pink, pink background. Then, then we'll talk about how to bounce light around if you want to. So but for now, mm, we can block in the colors. We'll just start with a flat grey and we're just gonna stop right here and do the tones. So many new things to learn, right? Okay, alpha lock this. Shall we start from black? We shall. Okay, black's down. And of course, we take it one step at a time. One step at a time, the next tone. I'm just gonna straight use the hair brush. Turn off the. Should I turn off the alpha now and work on the hair? Maybe not. Okay, let's go ahead and erase um, the hair sketch so that we can actually see what the hell is going on. Okay, remove all of them. Yeah, now I can see. I'm just gonna um, smudge this end off. And we'll leave the hair be for now while we work on the rest. In fact, I'm just gonna erase this. Okay, make it, make it back normal. So I'm gonna start a new layer because I already done my hair, which I shouldn't have. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna switch to the airbrush. Just gonna lightly shade everything. Now I use this uh, tone first because I was afraid that if I use black, I couldn't see the lines. So now we're gonna use black. We can finish our two darkest tones here. Alternatively, you could also um, change the colors of your sketch lines. So we always start with all the soft edges first, which is why we are using this airbrush now. Always remember soft edges first, then hard edges. Always in that order. We don't. We try not to use um, the blend tool because the blend tool leaves marks, and sometimes the marks are not very pretty. Okay, if I've, I've erased all the uh, unnecessary lines that I don't need for now so we can add in more details and we'll be able to see them. I'm still just using black. If you have taken my sketch brush uh, practice and if you have practice, I, please note that I also do this in like as minimum strokes as possible. It's just a philosophy I have when it comes to art. I like to do it as efficiently as possible. Some of you have asked me how to smudge, but I really, really, very really seldom use a smudge tool. I think smudge is like the eraser. Mm, if you depend on it too much, it's hard to create. Okay, I think we can start and work on the nose now. Okay, let's see what I can do to return the information that I've just erased. Gonna erase even more information. 
if you have noticed i haven't even used the third uh darker tone i've only been using the two darker tone up until now the toner range is really small always remember that the lips does not have any outline unless the model is a varying eyeliner okay i think we can finally merge down let's go ahead and erase whatever is out of the lines and merge down and now we can finish up the hair Okay, we can finally move to the third tone, finally, which is actually the base tone, so we'll move another one up. Okay, we're gonna continue with the highlights. Okay, when we're in this stage, we have uh, a bit of a choice, because at this stage, we only have uh, one more tone to go to complete the tonal value uh, base before we proceed to refinement so and that is the last um, highlight for the face so we can actually just um, do it now or do it later on I'm thinking that um, since since this is quite new to everyone maybe we should just do it now at this stage where it's still easily identified because we can't really go too far into the scale when we are doing highlights for dark skin so there's no way we can use white so let's try and use the another uh, this is one tone up and see if it's enough well it seems like it's enough have to be really careful about the range of our tones that we use here Okay, it's looking quite good already which means that um, as far as realism goes this is where we should stop so in this case we are going to go back to our sketch layer this is our sketch layer and we are going to alpha lock it and make some of the lines brighter let's turn the alpha lock off and we're gonna just match the eyebrow a little bit to soften it and with that I think we can call our um, grayscale with um, soft edges done and after this we are going to be uh, we will be able to work on our details already mm, from far it seems like the portrait is a lot darker than the reference so it's easier to see if it's like the same size so what we can do is just um, give it a little bit of a change using the curve tool yeah now it seems a lot more uh, accurate so what we're gonna do now because it looks a little bit patchy so see it's very patchy here now we're just going to um, blur it a little bit let's see if there's a blurring brush doesn't seem like there is um... okay using the airbrush or the smudge tool seem to be able to um, remove all the artifacts so let's just do that first and smooth everything out before we move on with our hard edge okay i'm just going to um should I or should I not? Mm, maybe I should just smudge it then. Okay, I think we are ready to um, refine this painting. Um, first, I'm just going to do the mouth because I'm very annoyed with it right now. It's completely wrong. So let's just do that first. We're just going to merge down the um, line layer. And now we're going to make our edits. Um, it's going to be all hard edge from now on, so just the plain old sketch brush would do. Okay, let's fix this lips. I'm just going to use one of my new brushes 
you can get this from my previous video just find it in my channel so this one has a blunt end which is what I need now You gotta be really careful with the corners of the mouth here because um, it changes value very fast from between here to here. So let's say I'm picking this color and if I just draw one line, you can see here it's really darker and here it's really lighter. So you gotta keep changing your values as you render your lips. What seems to be a shadow at one point may seem to be highlight in another. So be careful about that, and then you see that's patchy already. So we gotta fix the value, and always don't forget that. Um, let me just show you exactly where. Okay. Okay, so here's how it is. Let me just grab my. Okay, this part here is the same value, with the skin. So you see the skin is the same. It's the same. There's no hard edge here as with here, here and here so but this portrait particularly um, has a lipstick here so you can see that it's a lot more defined compared to some of the other portraits where the values here are completely the same so these are just things to look out for when you're doing lips I think I'm gonna about to call these lips done and move on to another feature of the lips you have to really look for spots where the values are the same like for example in the photo I can see that here and here are exactly the same value the lips and the teeth so you have to show that same um, value difference so I need to like kinda like gel both of them together as if they have no line in between okay now we can move on to the nose just going to clean up the edges Also, it's a good idea to like if you want to draw a highlight here, right? Like there's a highlight here. So you can see the highlight is very harsh because I picked the color from here. So what you can do is actually pick the color from nearby the spot that you want to do the highlight on. Then the highlight will usually be a lot more reasonable. So now's the time to put in hard edges uh, that you want to put in. Hmm, I'm just gonna check the nose. I don't really like the nose, no offense. But um, let's see what we can do as an artist to make it more appealing. Or oh, shall we just let it be? I think we shall just respect the model and let it be and see what we can do later on. But meanwhile, let's fix the tonal values. Okay. Studio collarbone. So there are sometimes you can just do like hard edges like this, and then we can just uh, blend out one end and leave the other end uh, sharp. It's easier to do hard edges after soft edges instead of the other way around, where everything is a mess and then you can't differentiate between. Uh, soft and hard edges anymore so let's move on to the ears you know what I'm just gonna demonstrate a technique so this is our ear and this is the darkest part so from painting dark to light is really simple because it's really easy when you like do step by step. I'm just moving one tone at a time using hard edge brush. Just clean up the edges again uh, if you over painted them. Okay, and then now we can just, you know, blend it out. I used to paint like this a lot, just dumping in tones and then blending them out after that. I stopped doing this because it usually um, result in a very patchy output which I do not like. 
and sometimes the edges become too dark. And then of course once we have done with the soft edges, we can just put in our hard edge and blending out whatever that we need it to be soft. Now we can move on to our eyes. Of course the first step to do is to um, clean up the eyelids the space between the lines sometimes when you sketch everything the entire line here is black but in a realistic drawing it's not always the case because there are changes in the tonal value within the line so it's important for you to um, to find out exactly what value they are like for example the line here is a lot lighter see it still has the same contrast effect only it's more subtle and not so cartoonish so if you can get this right you will have a more realistic drawing and then around the iris is usually a soft um, halo of um, slightly lighter color a tone. I'm teaching and I'm using all the wrong vocabulary. And of course when it comes to wrinkles, just pick the colours around. Um, shadow then highlight. When there's a shadow, there must be a highlight. So when you draw a line, one light that is dark and then one light that is light above it or below it, depending on the lighting. Okay, now I just want to do some of the highlights and the textures before I go to the, uh, what do you call it? The, fuck, words escaped me. The color stage. So let's start back again at the hair. Hair, hair, hair. Some of the definition got lost um, when we blurred the image. Okay, we can go into our hair strands now to put in the oh my god the details. So we're just gonna put in some um, highlights for the face, but of course before we do that, I've oh, I've have ten thousand things to do first. Okay, okay, let's get to it. No, 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 I'm not done. Okay, this is really high contrast. Okay, highlights time. Watch the tone of my highlight now. Okay, what we'll do is um, use the skin texture brush to put in the highlights. So we can think of this stage as um, contouring the brush. A uh, contouring the brush. Contouring the face with... Um, Highlighter And if we want a bit more um, What's that term? If we want a bit more um, Definition In sharpness in our lines We can use this brush Which I can't share unfortunately So you see it gives kind of like a cross hatch text Cross hatch texture I will never record at night again I can't pronounce anything. So remember not to use all these brushes early when you're painting because you won't you if you find it really hard to edit after you add all these textures. So make sure that everything is correct before you proceed to adding textures. Okay, just for the neck, um we are gonna draw some lines because you see here there's some like uh Wrinkles, I want to call it wrinkles, just neck lines. Okay, that's it for now, I think. I'm mm, just gonna tone down this line, this uh, highlight here one step down so that I have more room to play with when I put in effects. I'm gonna leave the brightest for the effects stage. Okay, there we go. So now we are ready to put the color on our layer so before we do that we need to turn on the alpha lock 
So what this alpha lock does is, um, let's say I have a blue. I've turned on the alpha lock now and I cannot paint past the boundaries of my painting. So that is what alpha lock is for. So we just want to put color into the existing areas of the paint of the portrait instead of the background because they are in a separate layer. I'm just going to try this color and see what happens using the saturation brush. Just going to give like an all over. Okay, it's all brown now and I'm going to correct the hair a little bit. Uh, it's a bit reddish. So I'm just going to put in all the red tones in the hair. And then after that, we're just going to grade it back down. I'm also going to burn it a little bit because it seems to be a bit too bright in certain areas. Okay, that would do. Um, from what we see in the photo, um, we can tell that the at first glance that the highlights are a lot more yellow. So we're just going to change it to a yellow tone for the highlights. Uh, this is a bit too yellow because it's looking a bit green. So we're just going to drop it back down and switch to maybe an orange. I'm just going to undo all that because it seems like it's very strong, the colour, and I have difficulty controlling it. So we're just going to switch to something that is easier to control in the mid-tone section. Yep, this is definitely easier to control because it's more grey and less saturated. It's like putting on makeup. Okay, now we're going to go for the highlights which is a little more yellow. So let's see if this tone works. Actually, it's a very, very slight yellow. So we'll see what works. So when we are doing a tan portrait, we want to think about the tones being really golden. Golden and rich. Then we'll be on the right track. Okay, I feel like I'm losing my reference here. So what I'm going to do is just to quickly um, change the change the colour of the eye so that I can gauge better and doing the eyebrows so that they are not so orange and a bit more just grey so that I can gauge better so of course when it comes to the cheeks it's a lot uh, orange it's a lot more orange instead of being pink just think of um, the skin being like a what you call it chocolate shading of a chocolate and let's not forget that um, there are areas in the body that are grayer like the neck here and the collarbone so we need to capture that the areas of um, grayness and finally let's try and capture the colors of the lips and for the it's always a little bit more gray and brown for the upper lip and then for the lower lip it's a gradient of um, pink to brown brown at the bottom just a very 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 slight redness to it and then just a very very slight redness to the nose Okay, looking much better. Just greying out the eyes. Okay, I feel like this portrait has come to life. And now I'm just going to pick out some of the strands to show um, some skin underneath the hair. We'll refine this later on. So now that we have coloured our portrait, we can then proceed to add on the details. And the first thing that I want to do is to give some details to the hair. Just going to put in some of the skin that is below the hair. 
Okay, now I'm going to give the finishing to the ears just to restate the shadows a bit. I'm giving some definition to the hair by adding loose strands. Okay, every with every tutorial, I try to bring something new to the table um, for everyone to learn. So today, we're going to talk a bit about um, bouncing colors. So, okay, let me demonstrate. Okay, now the background is magenta pink, right? So, if we were to redo the uh, portrait with a background like this, because the original background is black and grey, but ours is pink. So, this actually changes the lighting on the portrait a bit. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that if you want to uh, add light sources, different light sources to your uh, portrait. So, a bit of color theory first, so that um, we can do this confidently with um, knowledge. When the light bounces, it only bounces to the shadow area and not the mid-tone area or the highlight area. So let me talk a bit about that. Okay. Okay, so now we have highlights, right? And then we have mid tones and then we have shadows. So in the mid tones, this is where the true color are. Example of um, if I have an apple, the true color will be red. Okay. If I have a lavender flower, then the true color will be like bluish purple. And for example, this portrait, the true color will be like dark brown, correct? Like chocolate brown. That is the true color of the objects. The true color of the object always shows up the most in mid tones. Where else, um, in between the mid tones and the shadows is what we have the terminator. This is called terminator, and terminator is true color saturated. So this is where the strongest color are. Okay, the shadow areas are also where it receives uh, color from the environment okay and this also makes the highlight the color of the oh my god of the light source okay so let me demonstrate this okay let me demonstrate this yeah let's say okay let's say i have a background of blue and my sphere is example orange so this is my sphere so my shadow would be darker than orange, so it will be something like this. And then, um, I'll go a little bit more deeper in the next uh, tutorial about color theory, but so this is just a basic one for us to familiarize ourselves with temperature changes. Okay, so now we have a basic sphere. Mm. So what I'm talking about is for the mid tones, it's the true color, true color, which is this color is the mid tone. Okay, let's just leave it here so that we can. So this is mid tone, and then um, when it comes to terminator, it's gonna be a little bit more saturated. So it's going to be saturated in between. Mm, let's just bump it up. So right where it meets the shadow is going to be saturated, and then then we have the shadows which in this case is this color but we are also talking about um, that it receives um, color from the environment so the color of the environment is blue and we can show that into we can show that in the shadow area because light only bound color only bounces in the shadow area so to do that we just use a saturation brush and put in use the blue from the background in a little bit then you can see it already look a lot more reasonable because we can see that it's taking color from the background then let's talk about the sh uh, highlights okay the highlights will be the color of the light source so which in this case so in this case this light source is a bit colder so if it's a bit colder it will be the color of the light so when you have um, Something like this, then it makes a lot more sense because everything starts to gel together. And this is the basic theory for the color uh, bouncing. So this is something that you should definitely remember. 
And now we can use the same theory and apply it to our portrait. I'm just gonna duplicate my... Oh god! I'm just gonna duplicate my layer. And I'm gonna pick this uh, pink color. So now we're gonna identify the shadows. So the shadows is definitely gonna be uh, in the night area. So a little, little bounce goes a long way. We have to be careful not to let this uh, effect get onto the mid-tones. So one question here. Does anyone of you know what will happen if I change the background color from the current, current one, which is black, the original picture, to white? What will happen to the shadows? Well, the answer is that the shadows would be lighter. And that is actually a trick that photographers use. But we also have to take into consideration other things in the environment. Like for example, this part here would probably have less of a color bounce because its uh, closest object is actually the hair. So it will have less of um, the redness in it. But we can still add it to give it a bit of a unifying uh, effect. So we have to try and avoid uh, the highlights because the highlights... So when we're doing this, we need to really really try and avoid um, the highlights. So previously here was um, black but now it's going to be pink a little bit. We need to try and avoid the highlights because highlights is the colour of the light and right now we are painting the colour of the environment. It needs to be in the shadow. We also try, need to try and keep the mid-tones pure, as pure as possible. So for this area here, if you can see, yeah, this, this piece of shadow here, um, the closest object to it of, is of course the hair, so it bounces from the hair first, right? So we're just going to give less of an effect here. Then we also need to take into consideration the tonal value of the objects that we're going to bounce in, bounce from, like for example here, here is completely black right right now but we are bouncing a lighter colour which is magenta and it's probably like a value of a 6 or 7. So this whole shadow here can be a lot lighter than it is now because it has changed in value. And then also for aesthetic purposes. And then also we have to uh, think about um, the things that are the same color as the background. Will they get even more? Uh, well, will they get even more uh, saturated because they are the same color? Like for example, in this case, the lips are about the same color as the background. So, do you want to make the lips more pink? I know most of you just want to say yes. So, shall we give it a go? Being subtle goes a long way. So looking from here, we can see that uh, it is not very realistic to re-enhance things that are the same colour with the background to, be, to have a stronger colour. So, we should just keep things subtle and we can instead enhance the uh, shadow area. So there we go, we did some sort of a colour bounce, that's pretty easy right? So I'll go into more funky stuff uh, the next tutorial when it comes to colours and how to play with it. Then you guys can actually really really uh, improve your sense of colour. So now we, have, we can go back to like doing the details. But before that I just want to show you the before and after for the recoloring for the color bounce. So this is before and this is after. We can see that um, the effect is quite subtle. Then we can then proceed um, decide if we want to like enhance the effect even more. So it's okay to do so. So now we're ready to go back into um, our details. Back to our details, we're gonna do the eyebrows. For the eyebrows this time, uh, for tan eyebrows, I'm gonna for tan skin eyebrows. I'm gonna start with the darker shade first, which is black, and go all the way down. And let's redo that again. 
and then as we move towards the center we use a lighter color for the highlights uh, but we keep it sharp and black to define the edge Ronnie, you take the air purifier from my room you can, you can take the air purifier from my room Oh really? Yeah, they are just like having their So for the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to um, mix colors and pick colors and everything you want to know about color theory. So if you have any questions about color theory, please ask me in the comments so that I can address them next week. So about the topics that I'll be covering next week will be like um, how to mix colors, how the, color, the temperature changes um, in an object. And then also what we covered today is in uh, how do we bounce colors, how do we change colors when the light source changes. And then also I'm going to talk about how to paint a painting that seems to glow. So it's going to be a very interesting um, topic for us next week. So if you don't want to miss out on that, you can just subscribe to my channel. Please ask me if you have any questions about color. And I'll try to. So some of you may be wondering like why uh, is it so difficult to find resources like this? Like things that talk about color theory and things like that. Well because there is a lot of resources for beginners book like how to paint a digital painting for beginners. How to paint oil painting for beginners etc. But there is very little material on Progressing from, uh, progressing from a what do you call it? Mm. There is very little uh, resources for progressing from a okay artist to a professional or expert level artist. There is very very limited resources when it comes to that, and that's why a lot of artists are stuck um, trying to get there because of that. So I'm just trying to, with this channel, I'm just trying to bridge that part and help beginners transition to moderate artists and for moderate artists, how do you progress to a professional or expert level artist? But the first step of your studies would always, always, always be grayscale. So practice your grayscale. Um, paint everything in grayscale and see if we can detect the values correctly don't skim on that when it comes to highlights it's always good to double check their temperature like for example this one here is a bit too warm it should be colder so it's easier to tell when you already have something now then you can like oh it's supposed to be colder or it's supposed to be warmer you know like even this one i think it's too warm so i'm just going to pick this color make it slightly brighter and make it warmer by making it gray and see if it works it works but there's no more pop so we're just gonna push the temperature a bit to be colder so right now it's at orange so colder would mean yellow or red so it will be yellow, so next we will push it to yellow a little bit. Then when we put it down in the painting, it looks colder. Then um, for this highlight here, you can tell that this is completely different color compared to the one in the photo, which seems almost magenta, so we can do that. So one thing about highlight is that um, it looks more natural if you can saturate and darken the edges like this it looks more it pops a lot more and it works even better if the saturation is darker yeah you see it starts to glow that way so these are some tricks that you can do so in a way my highlights brushes so i have three they are created in the same way so for example, you can create the same effect of the pink one, like that, 
where it's like really saturated on the edge see if you look at this highlight here you can see that the edge here is a lot more darker and saturated and that is what we are looking for when it comes to highlights but the you have to use the tints for highlights palette if you want a strong color so for example these are the highlights right so right now it's like all blue doesn't look very realistic but once we put the white highlights inside of it then it looks like it's good but you have to be careful because highlights is the color of the light source and in this photo the light source is clearly um, warm golden yellow it's slightly warmer so this blue would not really work and she looks like an alien now because of that so what we can do is to redo the same thing but using warm colors then it will make a lot more sense so bear in mind that this is just the rim color that we are painting so you see this is a lot more uh, reasonable in re relevance to in reference to our background color but it pops too much so we can always just tone this down because highlights doesn't have to be pure white all the time see when see this one looks a lot more um, reasonable already see it looks a lot more natural this way so that is the guide on how to put highlights and we can also do the same for the entire eye Okay, we are now ready to put in our lashes. So when everything is so low key here, in terms of tonal value, we need to add a couple of highlights this time. So that everything is just not a big gapping hole of black. There is a way to using black. When you're drawing lashes, it's always nice to draw them in clumps of triangles like one triangle, one triangle, one triangle You get the idea It's when they're not triangles that they start looking uh, unnatural Because it's always wet and because they're wet um, they tend to clump together and then some are darker than the others Good to have a nice balance of randomizing everything. It's easier to do highlights um, zoomed out instead of zoomed in. So, if, example, if I zoom in, mm, this would look natural, right? It looks perfectly fine. But once I zoom out, oh my god, look at this. What is this nonsense? So, remember to do your highlights zoomed out. And sometimes you can try a different kind of highlights to see what works so for example this one it's a bit too strong but it's actually the correct value so how do we get apart how do we get past this um, problem and how do we solve this we try other brushes and we layer um, brushes on top of each other so that we can get the correct effect and this is how we would proceed to um, through trial and error to solve each problem that we face and sometimes in situations like this you will find that it's easier to just do something else first and see what works for other areas at the same time we have to be mindful about the colors that we're using a lot of things going on the correct color of the highlight is the one that doesn't stand out at all and just seems to coexist with the rest of the colors once you have identified the color of the highlight you can then um, proceed to test the grayness of it the more gray it is the less saturated it is so 
So for areas like this that has a big, um, what do you call it, surface area of highlights that are pretty soft, it's a better idea to use a shimmer brush because it's more random. And don't forget that um, highlights can change colour. And then of course we have to zoom out for the brightest highlights so that um, it's a bit more natural and we can see what's going on. Once the brush doesn't behave the way we want it to, we can change back to the confetti brush because we have a lot more control in placing the shimmer with this brush. And if everything starts to look odd, it means that um, the texture is wrong. I like this brush so much. I don't remember where I get it from but I think you can um, download them for free. I'm just going to change this to be my highlights brush. Yay! A lot more reasonable, isn't it? It's always a challenge to try and paint textures like this but it does give you a good satisfaction when you get it right. Subtlety is key, I guess. Even if you can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. We all know that highlights is a very important part of the painting because it's a great finisher to any painting. You can make any painting pop. But at the same time, the most important part of getting um, highlights that look correct and visually appealing is that every highlight has its own texture that you have to discover for yourself. So you have to discover like how to create the same textures that you see from the reference and at the same time giving it your own style. So I think that is the biggest challenge of um, highlights in general is that because it's hard to get it right because you have to figure out the textures but once you get it and it looks great then um, you can then keep the experience and apply it to other paintings okay I'm finally ready to do the nose again let's see if I can do it this time Okay, it's still in add mode which means that it's a highlighter brush all you gotta do is just change the blend mode from normal to add to make any brush into a highlighter brush easy isn't it do I know that this texture will work not really but it's an educated cast from my experience so we'll see if it works Better than the first time, but we're not there yet. For portraits like this that is very low-key, dark skin, you may find that you have difficulty with the highlights because the highlights always seem to be too bright. So you can just um, tone down the highlights by covering it up with the base colour.
so today we're gonna introduce something extra to the portrait that we have never done before and we are gonna go into special effects from this video onwards so what I want to do is to duplicate this base layer before we proceed in case we mess up so the first thing I want to do is give a cloud to everything so I'm gonna make a new layer yeah we're gonna go into elements and clouds and we're gonna pick sweet pink we're just gonna give a little bit of atmosphere to the painting okay and then we're gonna create another layer and we're gonna sketch something on this okay now that we have this baseline we are going to give it like a shading mm, right first let's give it a solid line all the way through and then now we're gonna turn on alpha lock gonna make it darker at the, at the edges and also at the bottom and maybe right at the center now even more darker and we are not gonna put down the highlights for now so we're gonna get out of alpha lock mm, I think we stay off a lot for a while more now we can get out of alpha lock and we're just gonna sketch on top of this line another layer and we're gonna give this port this uh, give a nice moon sign to our moon goddess here so first we establish the shape before we worry about everything else and then now we can draw some stars so for the stars on this side um, we can just draw them first before we we can draw them first before we make them distorted for the perspective so this would be good same for this one okay now very simple we are going to refine the shapes and we are also going to adjust the values for these ones Okay, now we can turn the alpha channel. Hey, no, we can't. Forgot about the moon. Okay, now we can um, merge down and do the highlights for the strand. Okay, so now the basic um, shading is done. Now we can um, do the highlights. So, bearing in mind this is the brightest source of light, so this would naturally be brighter. And as you move to the highlights, you can um, gradually begin to change temperature. So now, so the base was this color here, the blue, and we are moving towards green. So the brighter it is, the temperature becomes warmer. Just slightly. This way, you can have a glowing effect. Okay, now that our head necklace is done, we can then um, apply the effects onto the skin so first there will be a shadow so i'm just burning using the skin color and then of course some of the hair will cover the necklace so it looks more realistic now and the next thing we're going to do is to apply a glow but before that we are going to take care of the temperature because this necklace is glowing, so the skin around it has to change temperature. We're just going to use the dodge. So because if we use the saturation brush, like this, and do this, we are just changing the color. So now we want to change the color and make it like that at the same time. So we use dodge. When we use dodge, it's, we have to be careful to use a, a cooler color. Because now it's like completely green. So I'm just going to swap to the blue 
Yeah, then it's a lot more reasonable, but then if you go to blue, it'll be purple, so somewhere in between. Yeah, this is just nice. Okay, now we're ready for the final effect, which is to glow. So we're just going to create an layer. We're going to immediately put this on add. Okay, makes a lot more sense now. Now we're just going to use the stars brush. Not before that, we're going to bounce some lights around. So because this is emitting light, so highlights are getting some of the light's color, which is blue. And then of course when there are lights, it shows up in the eyes. And now we can just adjust this uh, brush. Since this brush has a randomizing effect, we can just um, remove the grain source. So to remove the grain source, we just have to swap to blank. Okay, um, let's talk about effects a little bit more. Mm, we tend to see a lot of digital drawings or paintings of girls on the internet where everything is just blurred. So um, by doing that, we, it enhances the realism quite a bit because not everything is sharp. It's not that easy, not that difficult to do. So all we need to do is flatten this. Now that I've flattened this, I'm going to duplicate this again and turn off the layer and make sure the alpha lock mode is off and we're going to do a perspective blur pull it at the center of the face or anywhere that you want to draw the focus to so in this case i'm going to put it at the center between the eyes and then we're just going to slide for the effect okay once you have this you can see it's significantly blurred but you can always retrieve back the details because now we have two layers, right? We can turn off the layer at the bottom. We can always just retrieve that back the details by erasing over the areas that we want to retain um, sharpness. And I'm just going to erase the edges for the sharp layer so that we have a blurred, um, blurred edge. Yeah, so this is how it would look. And there we go. There we have it. This is the conclusion of this tutorial. And the next tutorial will have a lot of um, goodies included, free goodies. I will be including a lot of color theory uh, practice sheets. So make sure you tune in to the next one and send me any questions you have about color theory. Thank you so much for watching once again and I appreciate all your support. Share this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, see you next time. Bye!